Hey Nourishable, this is Dr. Lara, and today I am very excited to be joined by my friend Paul Battaglia. Um, Paul is a chef and also an experienced mushroom forager, so we're going to go on a little adventure in the forest right around our house and go forage for some mushrooms. So Paul, tell me a little bit about your experience as a chef. I did spend 22 years in culinary arts, and uh, along the way during my tenure, uh, I ran into uh, my chef mentor friend of mine, Chef Daniel Bruce of the Boston Harbor Hotel, introduced me to uh, mycology, the study of mushrooms and foraging uh, for wild choice edibles in the New England area. Um, so this is my first time ever foraging for mushrooms, okay. so I see that you brought along a few tools. It's quite simple. Uh, you need a basket to carry. Uh, in some cases you might use a brown paper bag. You want to avoid things like plastic bags because uh, the, if you start to get an accumulation of mushrooms, they can all start to plop on each other and break them up and ruin the integrity of them. Other than that, the only thing you need is a knife, and it, it doesn't need to be anything special. I mean a steak knife from the kitchen would, would suffice. The books help to both identify the mushrooms, give you a vast understanding of what might be available in your neighborhood or in your backyard or really right under a tree in front of your house. Let's enter the woods. Let's go. Let's do this. What kind of mushrooms are we looking for right. today? Uh, we, we have chances of finding oyster mushrooms, hen of the woods, chicken of the woods, uh, a varying amount of bolites. They could be bicolor bolite, they could be a boletus edulis, which is the porcini. Uh, we could come across puffballs, gem studded puffballs, giant puffballs, all choice edibles. Uh, it's possible this late in the season we could come across some chanterelles. What is it about the weather right now that makes it so perfect for foraging? Well, the season for mushroom begins around mid-June mm -hmm. and, and extends right through October, oftentimes into the first, second week in November, as long as we haven't had a frost. Why does this look like a perfect environment? From my own experience, because of the heavy doses of oak tree. This is an oak tree leaf. Okay. Right? I don't think it needs any explanation as to why we call it a coral mushroom. Give that a touch, you'll see that it's, it's moist. It's got some uh, oh, yeah, a little moist. bit of integrity to it. It's not crumbling apart. There's no bugs flying around it. That's a good indication. I heard a saying once that there are old mushroom foragers and there are bold mushroom foragers, but there are no old bold mushroom foragers. Uh, thousands of mushrooms, many lookalikes. Only eat it if you are 100% certain you know what it is. When you're first beginning foraging, it certainly helps to have somebody knowledgeable to get you jump started on it. Okay, so it looks like we may have found a white chanterelle. All right. It's always nice to clean up as much earth as you can. Mm -hmm. These are crowded gills. You can see how uniformly close together they are to each other, mm -hmm. yeah? Okay, yeah. and you'll see that they, they run down the stalk. So that's descending. Okay. It's a descending gills, mm -hmm. okay? These are characteristics of all chanterelles. Is that an amazing color? I think this is a pink chanterelle. If we unearth it, there it is. <gasps> oh, they have a, like a freshness to them. Yeah, well, so I, mm. uh, I'm, I'm, well, look at that. See that Mycena? Oh, yeah. See, so now if you flip this all up, that's all mushroom right there. Wow. That's all. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so this is the product of that. Okay. This is the unmistakable gem-studded puffball. You can see those little little gems or little studs that crest the top and surrounding areas of the mushroom. I could kind of scrape these. Oh, and you'll I see. see on my finger, my thumbnail there, that kind of dustiness. Yeah. Those are the spores of the gem-studded puffball. And there you go. Beautiful, white, fleshy. This is a choice edible mushroom. These are bluets, okay, and bluets choice edibles. Mm. Choice edibles, all right? So, you see that purpley color? Watch when I cut into the center of this. Oh, wow. Huh? What is... So we see these, right? But what is hard to see is these small ones. Oh. But if we move this stuff aside, okay? Mm. Do you see that lump coming up? Can oh. you just barely see what's underneath it? Oh my goodness, it's so big. 
See that? Wow. And that's how bluets do it. Check that out. Wow. That is so that's pretty. That's prime right there. That's so pretty. <gasps> are those puffballs? Yes, they are. This is a different type of puffball. Watch what happens though. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. So that's an Amanita, and the dead giveaway is these, these speckles. And the Amanita family includes some of those super deadly poisonous ones. Wow. Look at, it's, it's some kind of a puffball. Look at it. This is one that we found in our backyard. Yes. Um, the spiny puffball. Uh, we are not sure on the edibility of it, so we're not going to eat it. That's a, a giant puffball. And this is another one that we found in our front yard, actually. We found all of these guys in a little cluster together. <clears throat> and that's the, the gem-studded puffball. What's the edibility of these gem-studded puffballs? Gem-studded puffballs, puffballs are a choice. Choice. Well, how about these friends so over we, here? You know, it's definitely puffball family, but um, it's not something I've ever come across, and it's not something that's easily identified in the book. Yeah, so for now, we will also put that in the category of will not eat. This is a coral mushroom. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to think that it's crown-tipped coral. So it may not be it. It may not be crown-tipped coral. Okay. This is where identification comes tricky. So we are going to also put in the category of will not eat red. Cinnabar red chanterelle. Yeah. You know, it almost even, it almost even belongs in the photo. But, right. But we're not going to swear by that. All right. Uh, the bluet. The bluet. All right. Unmis kind of unmistakable. You know, this is this is a really, though not clean at the moment, mm -hmm. it's a, it's really a beautiful. The mass is good. The density is good. Mm -hmm. um, it's nice and firm. Yeah. This is also a bluet, though it's much more mature. Mm -hmm. uh, the cap starts off bulbous under the ground and leaves, and as it grows, it opens up its cap much like this has and becomes a little bit calm. Cave there. We will clean these up the best we can. We don't want to submerge them in water. You want to let water run off them in the sink and use a light little brush okay. to get all these flakings of leaves and you know nature's matter that, that just happens to be part of wild mushrooms. And then I just take the knife and kind of scrape the surface a little bit in case there are pine needles get in between there and earth matter. Yeah. You know that like that's just in its prime state. Now, here, I want to show you the puffball. So this is the one right from the lawn. Mm -hmm. We knew it was nice and firm. You can see how white and fleshy it is, and as we cut it open... Wow, look how dense that is. Yeah. I want to turn the heat up a little bit now, because mm -hmm. we do want a hot pan. Okay. It doesn't have to be necessarily smoking hot, mm -hmm. but you do want it hot because we want these mushrooms to sear okay. and get a little bit of color to them. Mm -hmm. if, the, if the pan's not hot enough and you throw them in, what's going to happen is the moisture from the mushrooms is going to come out and they're just going to steam. Mm -hmm. And you'll know when you add the oil too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, does the oil just drift or is it, does the oil re react to the heat? You want okay. that little bit of a reaction. We're going to start with the onion. So we're sweating the onion. We're getting the perfumes out of the onion. You can even feel it kind of get into your eyes. Yeah, I can, I can really smell it. it smells delicious. We don't, want, we don't want the onions to burn. Mm -hmm. So now by adding the mushrooms, it's going to cool down what's in the pan a little bit. It'll take it down a couple of degrees, degrees and stop that kind of browning process mm -hmm. because of the water content in the mushroom. Hit it with some salt and pepper. Yeah. Okay, so here's fresh thyme. Wow, even just a couple of sprigs. So because of the moisture content, I'm letting these just kind of sit on the heat. Mm -hmm. And then as the moisture disperses, the mussels will then begin to sear a bit. All that those brown speckles, that's fond. Okay. I'm going to take the heat down a little bit because we're just about done. Okay. We're not going to need much. Wow. 
Now we add the butter. This is called monte or mounting the butter in with the wine. And that's going to give a creaminess wow. to the whole oh, it dish. Smells amazing. You want to keep the pan moving or else the oils will separate from the milk fats mm. and you'll get you'll, you'll get melted butter mm. rather than kind of a creaminess that you can kind of see there now. So the, the pouring in of the white wine to the fond in the pan, that's a call, what's called deglazing. Mm, okay. So that wine is gonna, is gonna cleanse the pan of all that brown goodness, which is flavor. Oh my goodness. It has like a nuttiness to yeah. it. Long puffball. Wow. Oh, I know, right? That is amazing. So thank you for teaching me yeah. the, the joy of foraging for mushrooms, yeah, it's the joy a, of it's preparing a mushrooms. It's a start, and really everybody that gets interested in it needs to start somewhere. A big shout out to Paul Vitalia for being a fun guy and introducing me to the world of mushroom foraging safely while connecting with nature. Thanks for tuning in to Nourishable. If you like what you're learning, please share and subscribe.